On the 26th of May, Netherrealm Studios will be releasing their latest DLC pack known as Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. This pack contains a new side story with all new cutscenes, three new characters to play as, that being Shiva, Fusion, and THE Robocop. We will also see the return of those quirky friendships where you not only spare your enemy but do something completely out of the ordinary. That's one of the things I liked about character friendships, you never knew what they'd come up with. A lot of fans of the franchise have been asking for these finishers to come back, but hey, better late than never. There are a lot of surprises that come with this DLC pack. The biggest surprise would be to see Robocop as a guest character. They actually went with the original version rather than the reboot Robocop, even going as far as bringing in Peter Weller to voice Robocop himself. I wonder why Arnold didn't voice his own character, the Terminator, as well. I know being busy is one thing, but it's just weird seeing that it's him but not his voice. Small nitpick, but nothing that could ruin the gameplay. Looking at this trailer, it's clear that this is going to be a fantastic DLC pack for MK11 players. They're even including new stages and stage fatalities. And if you don't own the game, you can buy the MK11 Aftermath and it'll give you everything that comes out so far, all for the price of $60. Sweetest deal ever. Especially when you look at how much you're saving since you don't have to worry about the price of all the previous DLC packs. If you do own the game, then it's going to cost you $40. But you know what? You can't say that fans didn't already know this is going to happen. Because Netherrealm Studios has done this with the previous games that they've released, such as MK9, MKX, and Injustice 1 and 2. The only difference here is that they're charging a lot more for this final DLC pack, and those who stuck with the game from its first day of release are paying quite the price after already paying for all the previous DLC packs and the game itself. When the game first released, it was $50, I think? Then along came the combat pack, which was 20 bucks. Then a whole lot of character skin packs, each pack going for 6 bucks. There are 7 that I found on PlayStation Network, adding to a total of 42 bucks. Not counting any of the crystals, since I'm sure that not every MK11 player paid for those. So in the end, this comes to a total of $112. And that's if the individual didn't buy the special pre-ordered edition. Not sure what it's called, but those usually go for about 80 to 100 bucks, maybe more, depending on what the order came with. So if Netherrealm is going to reward anyone here, don't you think it would have to be the players that stuck with the game since the beginning? Not when it comes to their greedy business practices, unfortunately. But at least this DLC pack will highly guarantee plenty of replay value for anyone that gets a hold of it. Now, as awesome as this whole DLC pack may be, I'm still not getting it. Reason why is because, for me, one of the things I like doing in a fighting game is unlocking all its extra content. If this game puts you through countless tournament ladders in order to obtain a piece that needs to be combined with another piece that has to be unlocked as well, and all those are to combine them in order to create a new gear piece depending if it's available. I heard that the gear system, cosmetics or variations, whatever they're going by, is a lot worse than how it is with Netherrealm's previous game, Injustice 2, so yeah, I'm gonna have to say no to that. Also, just like with Injustice 2, if you want to compete in tournaments or ranked fights, you can only use the default character abilities. I've never understood why they don't allow you to use your own selected abilities when it's not like they're more powerful abilities. They substitute existing abilities with different ones that allow you to create different juggling combos. You're not adding more abilities on top of the ones you already have. Having selectable abilities gives you the chance to mix up your combos. If you're stuck using the default abilities, you're limiting yourself to using the same juggles and for a veteran player, this basically means that they'll know exactly how you start your combos because it's the only way that that particular character can cause some serious damage. There will always be a few characters out of the entire roster that have a specific default ability or abilities that have a major advantage over all characters. On Injustice 2, this is Black Adam, Captain Cold, Red Hood, Firestorm, and Aquaman. These characters have default abilities that give them a huge advantage against every other character in the game. To quickly summarize it, Aquaman can spam that tentacle from the ground repeatedly and use his trident to keep a good distance, and if you do come close enough to him, he'll use that counter ability to hit you with a water wave strong enough to send you across the screen, repeating this tactic all over again. 
Firestorm has some quick frame projectiles. One of them aims directly at your feet, which can stun the opponent, allowing for a devastating combo that can actually end in being stunned yet again, which basically lets Firestorm repeat the process all over again. The worst one of all would have to be Black Adam. His tactics are the same as the ones I mentioned for Firestorm, only much more difficult to survive against. His projectiles are mostly aimed at the opponent's feet, which can stun them. He has these three beads that guarantee to give him a free devastating combo. They regenerate quickly, by the way, once they're, they're used. If the opponent gets hit by them, they're open for punishment. If the opponent blocks them while standing, their back is open for punishment. He can quickly fly behind you and do this. If the opponent crouch blocks those beads, then Black Adam can use the forward X heavy attack to bounce the opponent off the ground, allowing for punishment. As long as you can remember how to do one specific juggling combo, you don't have to worry about skills at all. Now, just because these specific characters have these overwhelming abilities doesn't mean that they're unstoppable. You just have a very minimal chance of winning against a veteran player that knows everyone's default abilities and combos, and memorizes one juggling combo. However, if you swap out certain abilities, some of them are actually perfect for countering those moves. So again, when you are not allowed to switch abilities out, you're limited to the same juggling combos that can only be performed with the default abilities. You can't counter any of those spamming tactics unless you choose the same character and outspam them. For some reason, Netherrealm Studios never bothered to add an option to turn off the stat boosts that came with customizing characters. I always wanted to have an even match against online opponents with our own chosen abilities, but we never got them, and that was a flat out disappointment. I hear that MK11 has the same problem, and I know this can be subjective, but it should at least be an option. Because no matter what the developers think, they don't know exactly which characters are 100% balanced. One or two movesets can be the difference between an even fight and a combatant with a higher advantage. So, if they refuse to give us the option to swap abilities and compete in ranked matches and tournaments, and you still have to go through that whole monotonous free-to-play mobile game grinding for cosmetics, then screw that. Those are just two reasons why I won't get this game. We're still talking about the same game where the developers inserted their political messages in the story and its characters. The wardrobe double standards are still a thing, and it's hard to be invested in a game where everything is constantly retconned. It's the same problem, well, the same reason why I haven't made any new videos on Dragon Ball Z. Everything's a complete mess. Nothing makes sense anymore because they've retconned far too much. That, and they've put over 110% of attention towards Goku and turned him into a Gary Stew. A really, really dumb one. Mortal Kombat 11 is not a bad game though. The gameplay and graphics still look amazing. I'm sure that I'm missing out on a lot of fun by not playing it, but I'm okay with that. I already have tons of fighting games lined up that I'm trying to get better at, including a lot of old school fighters since I'll be talking about them pretty soon. So I know I'll be missing out on the MK11 Aftermath for sure, but this isn't me telling you not to buy it. Go for it. If you don't own it, then you can't miss out on this opportunity because you get everything for the price of 60 bucks. If you already own MK11, then you're gonna have to cough up 40 bucks, which is kind of a dick move from Warner Bros. Especially for those who bought it on day one. I'm sure they've already spent over 100 bucks, so I can understand if they feel like they're getting the sharp end of the stick. I'd say it should have been 20 bucks, maybe 30, but no more than 30. I know it's cool to see that they added friendships, 3 DLC characters, a side story with all new cutscenes, new stages and stage fatalities, but 40 bucks for those who got the game from the very beginning of its release? Oof. Talk about a greedy business move. That's why I gotta say it's a sweet deal for those who never bought the game. It's cool to see Robocop vs Terminator here, but I prefer seeing those two in their own story based game, which I'll also be covering in the near future. So with that said, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. 
sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.